Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Prime Potty. It's absolutely fantastic to have this podcast started up and I'm so honored to have the best guest, one of my great friends and housemate, Louis Phillips on to the potty. Louis, how are you, my friend? Mate, very good. First cab off the rank. I'm very proud. Mm, Honoured, in fact. Very proud of yourself. You know how... Yeah, well, always am. Uh, you know how to capitalise on a good trend. Nothing like... <laughs> oh, <laughs> nothing, God. nothing like Tommy taking advantage oh, of his mate's success. Mate. So, well, glad to help and um, I'm happy to be here. We'll get into the success. Uh, Louis just... He's all talking about himself at the moment. He's turned into me about six months ago. And it rubs off on you. Now, Louis, I've written this down. I, mm. I would love your thoughts on it. Um, this is kind of just encapsulates what the Prime Potty is going to be. It's a place where I explore minds of successful athletes, entrepreneurs, and content creators, bringing you effective habits to utilize. And I think that that just encapsulates what I'm going to do. Perfect, mate. Yeah. I love that. I love a podcast with a bit of an aim and a mm. bit of a goal and something to actually get out of it. To be honest, we don't need more podcasts in the world that just talk, you know, like the fact you're going to talk to people who can actually help others. That's a, a really good start. Mm. And I think, uh, I actually think you're going to be a pretty good podcast host if you don't talk about yourself too much. <laughs> So I'll, I'll be that tuning in. That will be super easy when I'm on a potty with you, my friend. <laughs> <It'll> be, <laughs> first, yeah, first one, it'll be easy. Yeah, so nah, we'll see how well, you go, episode I'm, two. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm honoured to have you on, mate, and thank you for mm. finding the time. Uh, we obviously live together and everything these days, but a lot of people might not know how we first met and how we first came into, uh, I guess, just acknowledging each other. Mm. Um, so can you talk me through that? Absolutely. I, I mean, I saw your stuff come up on TikTok a long time ago. It was, you know, doing the athletes when thing. It was good, when, it, when my TikToks used to get You were views. flying. You, they still do. And, um, and straight away, Aussie culture, Aussie mindset just wanted to knock you down. I was like, who, how, who is this bloke? Oh, I hate him. Uh, and then we got talking. Turns out you're actually a really good fellow. We went Thank out you. one night, had a, an amazing night, had a fair bit to drink. And I suppose the rest is history. The rest is history. We're not going to delve too deep into it. We don't need it. There's been plenty of delving into that. Yes. We'll leave that one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, and then we got to know each other. You, you were in Noosa mm -hmm. and I was in Melbourne. Just kept chatting, kept linking up kind of thing. And um, like every time you come to Melbourne, we'd catch up. And to be honest, mate, pretty like amazing how well we connected together. Like it, it just felt so easy. So... Um, since then, we've been very close and now you've moved in with me. It's interesting. And I'm the king of the house. Oh, God. I had a question the other day. They were like, does Louis wear a crown around the house now that he's got the ton <laughs> followers? I am. And I say, guys, <laughs> come on. Uh, it is yes. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I Obviously. do. Mate, I've just, I've copped it for the last two years oh, about being mate. the little dog. No, you've been. I'm you've, about to own it. You've blown up, mate. It's incredible. <laughs> and we're so uh, happy for your success we got to get into a little bit of where you started because there's a lot of people that might not know the Louis Phillips story from the very, very start. I know you do a lot of podcasts with 9 to 5 with you and Gab, but mm. I don't think I've ever heard you just doing potties that much by yourself. So I'd be keen to kind of get into like where you started, where you grew up very quickly and then and then go through a little bit of your journey. Absolutely, yeah. I, definitely a bit of a different one to, you know, definitely the people, definitely to you and mm. to Gab as well. Um, I was born in WA, moved to Singapore and then came to Melbourne when I was about eight, I think. It's when Eagles are winning the grand finals. So <laughs> yeah, that. okay, we don't need to know that. And uh, <laughs> since day one, real, a lot of trouble at school. So like okay. very lucky that dad was a teacher and he, he kind of, nurse me through school but uh he serious, got you out of trouble mate well he just he they just put a lot of time and effort into me which is what i needed uh but adhd auditory processing uh generally just not interested in in anyone can you not laugh at my disabilities <laughs> just sounded like a concoction <laughs> i was of issues. Mate. i know i was and and so there's all these sorts of issues and i was a big a, a lot of trouble at school um so then Dad, being the smart teacher he is, he said, let's put him into a Steiner school. Do you know what that is? No idea. It's like, Enlighten me. It's like a, an alternative form of learning, which is as hectic as it sounds. You learn with your hands. It's oh, like God. learning with beeswax. You do this thing called Eurythmy where it's like ballet and stuff. And I did that right up until about year six. And then they threw me into the deep end of an APS private school, which is like one of the kind of more elite private schools here in yes. Melbourne. Um, where I was learning about algebra. Well, I wasn't really learning. I was trying to get through. But anyway, managed to get through all of that. Somehow scraped through school. Did year 12. Didn't do amazing. Went to uni. Still at uni. It's been about <laughs> six or seven years. Uh, but that's right. We're, we're chopping away and we're getting through it. And I just, yeah, I suppose started an NTF and have put uni behind me for mm. now. Yeah, you just, you keep saying to me, uh, Tommy, 
I've deferred <laughs> another semester. Now, didn't you defer the last five, mate? <laughs> I wonder when it will be that I say I've quit, but it's not anytime it's not soon. Yet. I'm it's still deferred. <laughs> well, I love to hear it. Yeah. Um, I guess there there was a pretty significant uh, little thing in there. After you finished school, kind of started uni, and you and Gab started this uh, mm. amazing business called 9 to 5 Fitness. Yeah, absolutely. So we, like, at pretty humble beginnings, to be honest, just working out together, um, building size and, and like really researching. We, we spent all day learning about what the you know best process is to build build muscle and be healthy and so on. And then naturally had a lot of friends asking us questions and saying, oh, can I get in on this and stuff? And like, can you make us a, a workout plan? So we kind of came together, Gab and I called each other about the exact same time, came up with the exact same idea of starting a business together. Um, and that was 9 to 5 Fitness. And, uh, you know, he wanted to do programs. I wanted to do apparel. Uh, we you want to do socks, right? Well, we started with socks, yeah. Okay. That's a, which is not what I'd recommend no. for any apparel company. I was just saying, I started with socks. But thankfully we had... Did you start with socks? Yeah. Really? I, I, quantity, 15. Sold three. Oh, cool. <laughs> Mate, we went, we went quantity 100. I got 15. I sold three of them. We hustled about 100 family and friends. So you, you is, sold all 100? Sold out. Wow. I, yeah. I literally sold three of them. That's, and just... That was the... Do you still about have humbles. them? What did you sell them? Uh, no, nah, I, I think I've still got three or four pairs mm. that I very, very rarely wear around. But sometimes I do just to remind myself of the humbles. It's good to remind yourself. Mm. And you oh, you do need a fair bit of reminding oh, on, with mate. the size of your head. Uh, I'm actually... Re I think I've turned a new stone. I think that's what people say. Yeah, turn the corner or... Yeah, well, I... I I think that it's a new me, maybe. Yeah. New prime. Cool. I'm, um, I'm yet to see it, but that's good, mate. No. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. Uh, and, and so, anyway, we started NCF. <laughs> Can we talk about me? Not yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm anyway. trying. And, right, you're... And then, <laughs> it's you. It's my right, podcast. Not me. It's, <laughs> you're not the host. All <laughs> oh, right, talk right, me guys, through. I'll handle it. Talk uh, me through. Yeah, and then we started NTF. Uh, it kind of took off a fair bit, especially through TikTok and stuff. Yes. We hit an LGBTQ plus community. Wicked. Which just flogged the algorithm. Love so, the political correctness yeah, as well. Yeah, uh, we, which was fantastic. So, shout out to them. And... Um, We've been going ever since. Mm. Now, the the nine to five thing is an interesting thing because you are similar to me. You kind of come from a little bit of a football background, but you also, I believe, come from a background where your parents have instilled a lot of confidence in mm. you. Now, you've started posting on social media as a 20-year-old male, I'd, I'd say, 21, yep. 22. It's a difficult thing to do, I think. Um, so talk me through, like, I guess, getting over that, that hump to start posting. Yeah, hugely difficult. And something I'm so impressed by you being able to do it on your own. Like, I could not have done it on my own. I had Gab next to me the whole way through. Um, I think, like, footy clubs and footy culture, and, and especially Australian culture, kind of creates this thing of, like, you're not allowed to step outside of the norm. Mm. And, like, much like your parents, my parents have just always instilled in me this idea that you can be anything you want. And, like, quite obsessively. Like, mm. you can literally, you can be an astronaut, you can do whatever you want, it doesn't matter, you can do it. So, I suppose taking that mentality along with playing footy, putting that together is kind of what's created me, which is someone who's relatively reserved, but still posts on social media. Yeah. Um, and I've kind of managed to navigate my way through that in a way that I'm really comfortable and confident in who I am and, and what I post. So it was difficult at the start, but once I got going, it was like pretty easy. And once you start getting success, once you're making money, you don't have to pay, you don't have to have a normal job. It's like, well... To be honest, I don't really care what anyone says. <laughs> How much does that motivate you not having the a normal job? And it's like, I just want to keep posting this stuff because I don't really want to go and work at a nine to five in an office. Exactly. And it's like serotonin hits and stuff for follows and likes. And you just keep chasing. You keep chasing the dragon. And you have been chasing the dragon. The dragon. I almost caught the I dragon. Know, I know. I'm not gonna, <laughs> no, too early, mate. <laughs> you just said, come on. Up. Up. Pull it back. Um, yeah. So I guess, you know, some, some people might not have grown up with that confidence mm. and maybe their parents didn't instill that much in them. Do you reckon that there's any good advice? I know that you didn't go through it, but any good advice for them to start when they want to start posting? Mm. Yeah, mate, it's a great question. I I think um, like firstly, I always ask myself is like, well, I'll say to myself is like, I'm going to die one day. Like right. literally that, that on its own is like, shit, who cares what anyone thinks? Yeah. The second thing is like, you think that people are going to be talking to your face saying, oh, I can't believe you post this, you absolute loser. Mm. Dude, no one says that like a thing. Never. I've never had someone say anything to my face, but you, behind my back, absolutely, mate, I'm the biggest loser. <laughs> so like you're, 
that the hate and what you're scared of is actually never going to be in your face. It's, it's, you're actually never going to see it. Mm -hmm. So like, what's the point in holding back? Cause you're never going to see it anyway. The, the worst hate comes from the screen a lot of the time. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, I think we both know that, mm. yeah, it, it, it sometimes can like get to you a little bit, but like mm. most of the time it's, it's pretty all right. So I, I'm sure that you went through a little bit of that at the starting mm. kind of phase of nine to five, maybe from your friends and stuff. But like, was it ever that bad? No, I probably made it out to be worse than it actually is, to mm. be honest. Like it's 90% of comments are very positive and, and, you know, uplifting. But yeah, there is the odd, odd few that get to you. Um, I try not to let it get me down. But as, I've, as I said, like I've always had Gab next to me who, yeah. you know, like we just work through it together. And that's why I'm so impressed by what you do is like doing this on your own is really difficult. So... Props to you, mate. Thanks, mate. You're being very kind to me. I, I, I did want to give you a compliment before that you are one of the greatest podcast hosts that I <laughs> that I know. So it's a it's an honour to have it changed around the other way, I guess, and to, to be interviewing you because I think that you've done we've done a few podcasts together on your podcast, the Nine to Five mm. Fitness Podcast, uh, which is absolutely just killing it. Um, and yeah, I think that you've interviewed me four or five times. I think sometimes I've gone off the uh, off the path that we were meant to be on. But it's my turn now, baby. I'll take <laughs> this worried. conversation and run. <laughs> I'm really worried where this is going to go. Yeah. This it's all about women. <laughs> Let's talk about the girls you're bringing home. And well, there hasn't been any, unfortunately, for no. me. Um, Good boy. Not many for you, really, either. No, it's pretty quiet. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk uh, quickly about footy because uh, mm. I know a lot of people listening to this podcast love their footy. Mm. Uh, you played for Kyneton last year. I did, yeah. Played for Con. Um, fantastic club coach, Paul Chapman. Uh, ripping fella. Like, learnt so much from him, not only about footy, but also about life and kind of being a man or an adult. Um, I have decided to actually leave Kyneton this year, despite... Oh, are we allowed to release this? Well, we're talking about it oh, now. Oh, no. And I didn't it's think it was going to happen. This is huge news. <laughs> so, I mean, and, and there's there's good reason behind it. Firstly, I want to play with you. and Thank you. Um, well, can't wait. Yeah. So, so I'm hopefully playing out at Wangaratta. It's it's not fully done, but I should be playing out at Wangaratta, you, Yeah. You'll probably be in the ones. I'll probably be kicking at the Magoos. <laughs> yeah. You can run water or something. <laughs> Kick the dew off, mate. I know. Yeah. See so how we go. Yeah. And, um, but like the, the reason behind moving to play with you was... You know, not only I get to play with one of my closest mates, but also like the freedom in content and the possibilities and opportunities that arise by you and I playing together is huge. Like already we've gone and had a chat to Sharon. Like that was incredible. You know, uh, so cool. Like like just for example, like we're 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 hooked up with Sharon now, which is just massive. And I don't know if that would happen if, if we were playing at separate clubs. And then also from the content freedom perspective, I get really insular and like concerned about what people think of me a lot of the time. And I know that playing with you is going to completely change that. So <laughs> you won't have to deal with any mate, stick from the boundary. Cop it. Cop it. I won't have to. Mate, cop you're going to be confident now. You're you're nah, they won't you're know ten me. times as big as me at the moment. So, so I'm going to yeah. be struggling. Exactly. Well, um, no, it's just not the case. It's uh, yes, yeah, it'll be very interesting playing footy with you this year. I'm glad mm. that we could release that and tell everyone. I'm so excited. We got a photo yeah. actually the other night yeah. uh, after Wangaratta Rovers training. And, um, and you're like, don't post it, don't post it. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I, I sent it to you. It'll be about, about done by the time this podcast is Yeah, out, okay, so okay. You should be right. Yeah, you've, yeah I'm, not, I'm not actually going to touch on what you have to do to get out of that. But uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's going to be very, very exciting to be playing footy uh, with you at Wangrad. I can't Rovers. wait. And like the trainings and stuff have been incredible as well. This has been the biggest preseason I've ever had. You and I have been kicking the footy mate, you're in so much. Elite shape. Thank you, mate. You're Same in with you. incredible shape at the moment. You're so running insane. almost every day. <laughs> you're running sub 20 minute five Ks. Yeah. You are the least amount of body fat I've ever seen you. Yep. You're welcome. That, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you <true>. are. <laughs> what can I say, hey, lads? You owe me a lot for that. <laughs> oh, just Mate, I live with you. Great diet. Pain. Great diet. Yep. Um, and yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just happy with, with where you're at. Exactly, mate. No, it's exciting. And yeah, as I said, the training's been fantastic. And yeah, you'll see me on the wing, hopefully. I'll shake my opponent's hand and see him at the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> that is so the plan. I literally used to go out to my opponent in Colts and say, yeah. hey, mate, I'll see you at the end of the game. No, 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 that's a lie. I used to say, I won't man up on you if you don't yeah. man up on me. A mutual agreement. <laughs> that's that's the winger agreement. I said, mate. hey, if you don't man up, I won't man up. It's a it's a win-win And it forever. was great. I think they'd finished with 12 and I'd finished with three. So it was a very good yeah, Three of the best, though. They looked three good. The but I used it well. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, no, fantastic. So I want to go into everything that's happening with you mm, on social crazy. media but before we do that we do have to get into a, a little bit of a plug because it's Woo. uh super exciting that prime 
has brought out supplements. We've obviously also got our athletic wear. We've got our training programs as well. If you guys want to snap any of that sort of stuff up, you can check out uh, the website and use the code podcast for 20% off on all of the product, which is amazing. And uh, look, I'm probably going to go bankrupt uh, because I won't even be making (laughs) money on margins. (laughs) <laughs> I'm actually making no money on the subs. Can, they, can you throw you a tip in? If you buy, just throw a tip in, guys. Oh, Please don't yeah. use it. I'm actually going to be selling these supplements with a 20% discount code. I won't be making any I'll profits. I'll spot your rent. I won't be start. making any profits. So, um, guys, make sure you go snap that up. Run my bank account absolutely dry because mm-hmm. um, I've spent all this money on the subs and you guys just be pretty much getting it for free. For free. Uh, technically. Yep. Uh, but yeah, we've obviously got the subs are massive. We've got the grass-fed protein, which is um, in chocolate and vanilla flavor. We've got orange-flavored pre-workout and then creatine. It's been incredible what's been going on with that. So make sure you guys go and snap it up mm. and get a training program as well because you might as well. Throw it in the checkout Just bag. Just bundle it. Just bundle, bundle it, mate. It. It's worth if it. If you bundle it, you actually save. It's literally, mate, workout programs, yours especially, incredible. Thank you. Uh, thank I absolutely so love it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, it's really worth it. It's going to change your life mm. for those listening at home. It, I, I think it is. And like I always say, if, if you can't afford our premium option... Mm. Then you can just go for you know one of our less premium options, which are fifty bucks mm. for an eight week program. And instead of going by and carting a beers that weekend, you can just jump on a program for start that, and then you don't have to worry. And you'll be fitter and healthier than ever, and happier. Oh well, because we what care matters. about happiness here. We do, honestly. We I do. love happiness. Happiness is pretty important. I know you want to wrap this up so you can talk about yourself, <laughs> your Come social on, media blower. Yeah. Buy it and let's get going. Oh God! All right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> Wrap it up. Here we go. All right, End the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Evan. End the body, guys. Uh, yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah, pump me up. Come on. How good am I? Louis Phillips, <laughs> you have gone Ooh. from, let's put a quantitative measure on it. Quantitative? I think you were at yep. 15K. Yep. Three weeks ago? Yeah, about that. Maybe two weeks ago, even. Mm, we'll say two weeks for dramatic yeah, effect. Let's, yeah, let's add some. I want some music in the background for you, like really dramatic. The build up. Um, what am I now? 15K. And Two. now you have. Yeah. Now I'm going to say a number here and I think that you are going to correct me because it's probably got, it's the the growth that is mm. happening. It's just keep, keeps on growing. Mm, it's nice. I think 116K. Yeah, nice. It'll be 120. Until when? By the end of today, <laughs> yeah, for that. It's at 117 so this podcast will, as we're talking. Well, but you when know what, it, mate, when it I'm comes not out, driven, you could be 200k. I'm not concerned with useless metrics like okay. followers. I'm more concerned with engagement and the effect I'm having on different people's now, lives. Now you saved yourself there because all of your followers always just unfollowed you. <laughs> I don't no, care no, about them. Don't unfollow. <laughs> don't care about literally my metric. whole personality. No, nah, mate, it's incredible. Mm. Um, You've gone from, like I said, 15K to 115K in a couple of weeks. Your blow up on Instagram has been absolutely fantastic. Everyone's been following just everything that you're doing. And um, I don't know, I, t- I guess I'll start with how you're feeling about it. Yeah, feeling great. Uh, a little bit rattled, to be honest. Like it doesn't feel real at all. Uh, there's also a huge sense of like, I've been posting this stuff for the last two years, to be honest, and mm-hmm. it's gotten no recognition. And like now it, it hits. And I have changed a few things up and, you know, my posting schedule is a little bit different. But the general message and the general vibe is very similar to the last two years. So I, I don't feel entitled in that sense, but I do feel like, well, like I'm glad it's finally happened because I've watched you like absolutely blow up and, and affect and change so many lives. I've watched Gab do the same. And I really did feel like I have something to give to, to different people. And if my niche is running, then I will run for you <laughs> and I'll tell you how to run. Mate, I don't know <clears throat> how you feel about it, but I think there's definitely been a, a change. Obviously, I live with you in, mm. in the way that you have been motivated to create content. Mm. Yeah, I mean, naturally, like you get a serotonin hit every time you get a follow. So like that, you, you're kind of riding on a high. Must be nice to get 100,000. Yeah, <laughs> mate, wait, no, for, wait for the come down. <laughs> wait for the come down. Yeah, oh, no. it'll be grim. Uh, but no, so like, and, and of course, all the, the nice messages I get. Like, mate, my DMs are just full of hot... No, of... Uh, <laughs> 
is full of people messaging me saying that like thank you so much for everything you've done like uh, you, I'm inspired by your running and more importantly like they're, they're screenshotting their Strava and sending it to me and sh- saying like I wouldn't have gotten out unless I saw that video so it's like I'm just going to keep producing keep pumping out content and making sure that like I am a catalyst behind someone going for a run it's incredible thank you mate. it's just incredible and, it, and, and it's interesting that you've been like you said uh or i guess i think it's your instagram by pigeonholed mm. into this uh this runner is that is that something that you expected your the direction that you expected your content to go um i've always been a pretty passionate runner and like somewhat of a good runner but and, and i've always noticed that when i do running content it does very well out of all of my other content I just didn't think it would be go like this, you know. Uh, I've probably been trying on the footy thing for a while now and it's like, I'm just, it's just not for me. Like, I just can't hit the footy scene like you can. So I am so happy to like, give that totally just to you. handball it off. Yeah, handball it off. And I'll just wait on the outside, yeah. mate. You get in and do the hard Like, because you're yards. so good at producing and, and your content is so helpful. Whereas mine was a little bit kind of here and there. Like, am I lifting weights? Am I trying to be a bodybuilder? Am I trying to be a runner? Like, where am I? Whereas now I'm just so happy to find this niche of like, mainly being happy and healthy, but also like what comes with that. So like lifting weights, running, beers with mates mm. i think that you know we're, we're going to get to tips and tricks of, of how you've done it but mm. i think that uh, like what you just said on the footy kind of thing it's just consi- like i find consistency with posting and i'm going to relate that back to you and you're running like you're consistently posting running in it and it's it's almost like a brand when you create a brand you want all the fonts the same you got to create everything the same like this is kind of what you're doing with the running it's like oh that's louis phillips he's he's a running guy oh that's prime he's a footy guy that's gab he's a powerlifting guy right so it's like if you can start to congregate everything into one under one umbrella then it just makes it so much easier for you to produce your content yeah it's bang on exactly right and like finding that trend can be difficult at the start but you can't get knocked back by low amounts of views like if, if you're you, you're wanting to start a process let's say you're trying to get a sub 20 minute 5k i'm going to document that you know the first three videos might flop which mine didn't do so great but then the fourth video hit and then mm-hmm. people are going back to the first second and third video so like sticking with it and sticking through it has been the trick for me and i can't believe it took me that long to figure it out because in the past i would have given up on you know by episode three and following a journey as well mm-hmm. like people that's what that. you started to do i think a lot and that personability like mm. that's what really grows a massive following is like if people feel like they know you. Mm. And I think that you did that when you produced one of the con- pieces of content you produced the other day, which was I'm a bit hungover today, but I'm still going to get in my 30 minute run. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And that comes from a point of like, I feel hungover along with, you know, a lot of people in Australia, it's the rest of the nation. Exactly. So it's like, how can I provide a fixie? How can I provide a tip without trying to sell anything to anyone? Mm. Um, so that's where that hang- hangover thing. And I was like, well, if I go for a run for 30 minutes, which is very difficult when you're hungover, I know I will feel better. So let's just document it and do it in a palatable format that people can digest it in a way that's like, yeah, he is hungover, but he's going to be all right. And it's it's short and sweet as well, mm. is what you've been doing, speaking of. You are going to start doing a little bit of YouTube and stuff as well, maybe? That's Yeah, that's in the works. I've already recorded my first video. Um, I haven't posted it yet. I haven't even edited it, so... <laughs> they are. They suck, man. They I hate suck. YouTube already. Yeah, but, they suck. Um, but, mate, the, the, the response has been incredible to the suggestion that I'll be starting YouTube, so I have to get on with it, and I will be getting on with it. By the time this video's out, I reckon... You reckon you'll be in it, so they can plug it. Go watch Louis Phillips' yep. YouTube exactly. uh, video. <laughs> so, let's just say... My question to you, I'm in your devs. Yeah. I'm not a... Along with many others. <laughs> many. 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 Okay, well, maybe I text you because I know you. Uh, Louis Phillips, this is my question. Mm. How do I get 100,000 followers in two weeks? It's a great credit. It was incredibly expensive. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you bought all your followers. It's so we'll funny. We'll touch on that in a second. I'll <laughs> okay. actually answer your question. Okay. Um, mate, well, yeah. Like, firstly, posting consistency. Like... Stop caring about what anyone thinks and post every day the same kind of thing like within the same realm. The second you start offering free advice, people will follow. If it's something like they feel like they should be paying for this but it's for free, why wouldn't they follow it? Same same with all of your content. So like offering free advice and stuff that I can actually help people with is has been number one. It's the consistency behind it. And then also like the production behind it. Utilize all the things on your phone. We've got these incredible phones with cinematic mode and stuff. Like you, we've got these incredible apps to be able to edit things. Like utilize those to your advantage, all the special effects and so on and make a little art piece. You know, my, my TikToks take 
three hours to make some days. Mm. And it's like, I'm lucky I can dedicate a whole day to that. But but it's you, your job. It yeah, is your job. Yeah, exactly. If, if you really want to grind it, then uh, definitely, you know, find the time for it. And if someone wanted to do it and they already had a job, mm. do you reckon that they could? 100%. Well, yeah. Like, you find the way if you really want to. Mate, like, you'd know... I get this all the time. Like, oh, you like you can only work out that much because you find the time. It's like, yeah, well, when I had a job, I was still working the same amount. And I chose, and, and and this is what I wanted my life to be. So I really strived hard. Like I didn't balls give up in your on court. It. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's Figure like it out, don't mate. complain if you're not like willing to kind of put in the it's, work. Like, or, yeah. or try it. Just try it. You know, if you want to try and do what you you know do what we do, mm. you, uh, there's a hundred percent of space for it. And like content is so. Like it has a bit of a connotation to it, like a feeling to it. Mm. But once you get started with it, it's literally just trying to help others generally. And, you know, I spoke about this on a podcast a while ago. It's like, we actually don't need more influences in the world. We need people who are going to affect lives. Like we don't need another guy posting his, you know, how many cocktails he's drinking or, you know, a girl posting a like... Lounge you know, the, wear. Yeah, lounge yeah. wear. Like the same same thing, the same consistent stuff, just like getting followers because they're hot. Like we need people providing value, adding tips and changing lives. And exactly. I think that's what we're pretty passionate about and, and same with Cab. We're so passionate about it. I actually just said it before that if you have followers, you have a platform, you have a foundation and you're not using it for, you know, some sort of value addition to mm. society, then you're just not doing it right. Like, you have to, there has to be a space. If you have a voice, like use it in a positive way. Exactly. And, and like we make mistakes along the way. I've said things and done things on through social media, where, which I somewhat regret. And like, you know, I have to always come back to that thing of like, think about the 14 year old kid who's following us and like make sure that I'm providing them the right information on how to be a man, how to be a person, how to be like whoever they want to be. Mm, so. It's so beneficial, I think, just going out into the street and then sometimes seeing the people that come up to you and it it's might be like changing. a 13, 14 year old guy and it's like, or girl, and it might be like, that is also a part of my market. Like yeah. I have to be very careful what I'm doing, hmm. that it's making sure that it's setting a good example for a 13 year old and a 30 year old. Exactly right. And and uh, the same at footy clubs, same as any kind of club as well. Like you are a role, a role model and I think we take that pretty seriously. Hmm, 100%. You're a great role model, Luke. Something else that I really wanted to touch on. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on it later, but I do want to just say mm. you get up early in the morning. And I think that that is one of the most successful habits of, um, I know, very successful entrepreneurs, mm. successful business people, just successful people in general. And I think that that's something that you really do well. Thank you, mate. Yeah, I, I've just like in the last two years become a morning person. Before that, I, I couldn't get up to save myself. But um, I just seem to wake up naturally at 6 a.m., like 6, 6.30, just I will wake up without an alarm, which sounds great. But when you go, if you go to bed at 1 a.m., mm. that's not ideal. Like it's I'm running on good. three hours sleep right now. No joke. Are you really? Yeah, my, my whoop is... Oh, your whoop's going to tell it, you your... I'm dead, according to my whoop. But yeah, no, thank you very much, mate. And... <laughs> I couldn't recommend waking up early enough to anyone. Mm. Like the beauty of living where together for us is like we wake up and we go into a hot girl walk sometimes. I love know, it. It's so beautiful. We go and get our coffee. Get our it's coffee so nice. At the start of the day. Like what a positive way to start the day. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend that to anyone and find a mate and go for a hot girl walk. I love it. I, lo I love the hot girl walk as well. It's, just, it's yeah. It's, it's just what it's leave. about. So you've, you've grown this massive uh, following. Mm. It's, it's growing. It's continuing to grow. I think that the most important thing is for you now to capitalize on it. Mm. Do you have any short-term goals yeah. um, to capitalize on this following? Absolutely. I'm going to be doing a, like, I just want to keep providing, like keep helping. So Adding value. Yeah, adding value. And and not necessarily with remuneration just yet. Yes, I do plan on making money out of out of followers and, and so on. But In terms of selling them a in business terms of selling, or a plan yeah, or yeah, something Yeah, exactly. Like that. Apparel, yeah. business, so on. Like not I just do, asking them for money. <laughs> no, just like help, holding them hostage. Actually, yeah. yeah <laughs> adding no, value and... Providing value. But, but first thing off the rank, rank I think I'm going to do is just creating a free running program. Like I just want people to be able to sign up something, get a running program that I create Amazing. once every week. And obviously like naturally I'm going to get emails out of that, which mm. is some form of currency I can provide, you know, sell something to them in the future for mm. those who are trying to figure out the back end to it. But like that's 
first first step. So hopefully by the time this is out, it'll be almost up and running. Brilliant. Um, and then obviously, like I've acquired this business Sunday Lounge, which is run by my sister and, and I. Yep. Um, I'm going to be turning something to Sunday Run, mm-hmm. which is also a plan. I'll probably have a podcast along with that as well. Um, selling programs and, and just like general lifestyle stuff. I really like the idea of like this kind of run and coffee vibe, you know, awesome. very Melbourne, just like getting out healthy, happy people getting together um, and really trying to capitalize on that side. Would there even be the potential for a group meeting, let's say at the tan track? 100%. And a little run? Yeah. I reckon what we am should, I hinting? So am I? Am, yeah. am I already too well, far ahead? No, mate. Bang <laughs> we've on. talked about it about doing we'll do something it like that. Yeah. I reckon what we should do is like a Sunday recovery because yeah. we're going to be playing half the year footy and like I can't really walk the next day, so we should be able to do like a Real walk low. along the beach into like some chill recovery because a lot Amazing. of our followers are, are you know football also sporty as so like they'll be sore on a Sunday and we can all get down together have a coffee rock up if you want to if you don't want to that's fine you're a and loser it's, it's a meet and greet kind of thing <laughs> exactly. as well like like I said like gaining that kind of one on one time with mm. any of your followers and there's a lot of them now you know <laughs> you gotta think that that's uh more than a whole MCG. Yeah, oh, <laughs> mate, it's it's honestly like I cannot believe, it. and the growth rate is even more concerning. Well, not concerning, it's positive. But you know what people don't warn you about what? when oh, you no. get a lot of followers, and like I, so I've started like my content is running based, yeah, mm-hmm. which is unreal, and with that becomes a whole like different audience. I got men, I got women, all ages, a lot of mums. Yes, a lot of mums in my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Mate, no one prepared me for the amount of mums that send me videos of them going for a run. Like, I reckon I get 10 to 12 a day. Hey, Louie, did my first 5K. And it's like a video of them talking, like just a classic mum. And I'm like, Susan, that is fucking incredible. I love that for you. But why do I need a video of this? Oh, no. And there are some hot mums out there. (laughs) Their sons are showing them. (laughs) I don't know what it is, but I've become... I'm the mum You've man. You've become the run mum man. I'm the run mum man. So that's what is, that's the meet and greet, I reckon. Wow. But no one prepared me for that. Oh, like, mate, I'll goodness. show you after this. It is it is incredible. But so. I think a lot of people don't prepare you as well. Like, yeah, there's that. But then there's also a lot of people that are trying to leech off your, oh. your success that I know that there's a few people, I'm not going to mention names, that weren't following you before and now they are <laughs> following you. And it's like, hold mate, on, lads. Where you were done, you when I was down? Yeah. <laughs> you hit 100K and oh, all mate, of a sudden... I didn't friends. realize that was the threshold. Oh yeah, hundred k now. Everyone's hundred k is the threshold. So yeah, that's that's interesting as well. And shout out to him and thanks for following along. I hope you enjoy the content. Following along, you hit that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a weird one. And, and how have you gone about? I guess <laughs> those people that you feel like might have a little bit of ulterior motives. Mm. Oh, what can you do? Like happy to happy to follow along and like you know you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Like people who are following me who haven't followed me in the past like that's fine they definitely knew who i was and like all of a sudden we're best mates now but um yeah if they can help me out then happy to but keep following them. them yeah happy to help them i mean what what can you do like you would have seen it as well and yeah. i think we can we're pretty good at filtering it out especially in our house especially like between you and i and the conversations we have um that can extend onto girls as well like being able to pick that out as well and and so on it's fantastic having you um not only as well probably probably my best mate here definitely in melbourne like i wouldn't yeah, have a close mate. relationship with anyone else um and living with you how have you found living i guess you know in the house that we've had you me and gab and and, and hess oh it's, it's been life changing, especially like moving i mean gab and i were to living together in brighton in this like little shoe box and to be honest it was it got pretty brutal like it was pretty toxic at times and i love gab with all my heart but moving in with you has really changed things up it's a whole new dynamic and i think the the general vibe of the house is just incredible so i'm uh, yeah it's happy i'm so i've never been fitter happier healthier so like that's that's something i'm so proud of um but yeah mate living with you is, has been incredible as you like you're one of my best mates and not just me i'm in the whole house but thank you the, yeah you. yeah well, i mean <laughs> no, saying, like I, yeah. exactly no, but, it's incredible um and just like the vibe is great which mm. i keep saying but <laughs> no it's fantastic the the vibe's been amazing and everyone's getting along really well mm. which is yeah it's just been it's been fantastic and then we've also got a gym in the house as well which just keeps us healthy though technically mm. we don't really need to leave the house we can literally just we be hermit crabs it's the com it's the genuine compound it's uh no it's incredible it is a compound um down there our um our house has taken some damages 
Should we release it? Yeah, let's say it. Let's talk about it. All right. So, our house got egged. Oh. <laughs> egged, mate. Egged. And we didn't want to announce it because what's going to happen is that kids are going to keep egging up <gasps> mate, the house. There's eggs all over Louis. <laughs> I can't. Why'd you have to egg my room? They didn't even shout out my name when they oh, egged they us. Oh, they shout out someone's so, name. It wasn't so, anyone sitting at this table. <laughs> So we're we're all in bed. It's like what was it? Two a.m. It's like two a.m. in the morning, and we hear whack whack like these. It sounded like rocks hitting a window. So whack. I thought it was rocks. I had I had a sleepover Mate, that night, and, and we yeah rocks. What's Who's going, going on? on? So now I went back to sleep. Yeah, straight back to sleep. Couldn't yeah, care less. Yeah. Uh, well, wake up ten a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Roll in ten a.m. That man. Oh, anyway, open my blind. Like egg splat everywhere. And like I'm on the, we're both on the second level, so you actually cannot reach it to oh, clean it. Oh, it's impossible to clean. So, so the little weasels that <laughs> egged our house, I please don't do it please again. Don't. It's, I get it's it. It's really hard to clean, and I understand like the exhilarating feeling of egging someone's house. I, I haven't done it myself. It's karma. I've I've egged someone's house okay, before, fair. so so it's probably karma. Yep. Um, well, there you go. And, and I'm sorry, I. I did it when I was like year 10 and, yeah. I, and I can understand the exhilaration. Mm. It was actually when one of the girls broke up with one of our friends and then we went, thought How it would be she? funny. Thought it is pretty funny. funny. But it, it's, it's immature. It is uh, very immature. And it's not something I would do now. And I'm, mm. and it, and I'm not very proud to admit it, but... Uh, is what it is, mate. But, so, uh, but well, that's why we're getting it. So I'm honest. It's, it's karma. It's karma and that's good it's to karma. know. Yeah, no. Nah, uh, but yeah, don't please do please don't I'm actually house. annoyed at myself that I admitted that, but I'm all about honesty on this podcast. You can edit it. So I'm going to tell... No, no. No, I want to tell everyone Chop. the person that I was. Okay. And the person that I am now is not that person. Good, mate. Now, we've talked about short-term goals for mm. yourself. I guess long-term. Can we look Whoa. in five years? Or, Lucky, or is yeah, that, we can. Or is that too far? No, we can do that for sure. I. It's hard <laughs> to tell. How much has that changed from two weeks ago to five years? Oh, cost? mate, heaps. Yeah, I like... You know, the, the recent success I've had really makes you like broaden your horizons. Like the, you can do anything in this world. And I've got some really exciting things coming up this year, which hopefully I can capitalize on. Uh, but in terms of a five-year goal, I'd love to do something regarding media. I'd love to do something kind of presenting wise. I really enjoy being in front of cameras and behind microphones. I think it's, you know, I'm so hot. Yeah, like, I was about I to say you are. <laughs> kidding. You, you know, it's actually interesting because <laughs> I have some some friends yeah, that are of the female variety. Shit, yeah, Do and ya? um, and all of a sudden, <laughs> they are in love with Louis Phillips. I could have done with this six months ago. They are girls, to in be honest. love with you. We've got some some really interesting Q and A's here for us, Louis. Mm, that'd be and, good. Uh, and and I really, uh, I put up a story, obviously, yep. and, and got a lot of got a lot of responses. <laughs> and a lot of them were actually about us playing footy together, but oh, cool. I didn't think it was it was yeah. good, so I took them all out. Louis, yep. Jackson asks, how do you stay motivated every day? Because mm. you do. Thank you, mate. Yeah, somehow. You do. I, I mean, I don't rely on motivation. Much like exact same with you, everyone in, in our house. Like, you can't rely on motivation because motivation is 10% of the time. I, it's literally like something I just have to do is either go for a run, hit the gym. Like, I need to hit these special marks throughout my day. Otherwise, I feel really flat. So, um, I don't rely on motivation. But I always find the hardest thing is getting to the gym or going for a run once you're out there, you really enjoy it. So nothing amazing for you, but just fucking do it, to be honest. Discipline. Yeah, discipline. Right? Exactly. It comes from discipline. It, beca- it comes from the motivation thing is such a like, how do I stay motivated? It's like, mm. we're not motivated every day to oh, do what really? we do. Yeah. Like, you think we wake up every morning and want to go to the gym? Not at all. No. It's just something exactly. that we have to do. It's something that, and, it's something that yeah. you have to do. To, to, if your goals are to be the best version of yourself. Mm. It's something that you have to do. Exactly. And you almost want to get into the mindset, which can be a little bit toxic of like being pissed off with yourself if you don't do those things you want to do. Like, Discipline. Like, what are you doing, mate? Like, re- reassess. If you honestly cannot just put get yourself into the gym after a long day at work, like reassess. Get in the gym. Stop complaining. It's no one else's fault. It's 2023, the year of accountability. Is it really? Yeah. Or is um, it just your year of accountability? It's my year of accountability. <laughs> or your year of and capitalization. Everyone who's listening. Jeez, <laughs> I'll be accountable this year, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Make sure you keep him accountable, everybody. <laughs> That's what I'll be Thanks doing. Thanks for the question, Jackson. That's what I'll be doing. Sam. Sammy. A um, bit more on the running topic, which I do like. He mm. asked, how do I stay committed whilst going through a plateau? Mm. If you guys don't know what the plateau is, it means when you kind of just hit that flat line mm. in running. Sheesh, good question. Something I'm still learning myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've definitely plateaued in, in the past and I think you want to change things up as much as you possibly can. Like if you're really plateauing with running, then think about like involving some swimming. Like think about trying to make things fun. You know, I 
love chasing a ball. So like if I really need to get a hard sweat sesh going, you and I can go for a kick. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Just keep running and figure out a way to do it. <laughs> Number one advice giver, Louis, yeah. keep running. Keep running. Yeah, i got to research <laughs> it is, that it, one. It's the, it's the hallmark of your but content. Change it up Yeah, is, is what I'm saying. Like, cha- change things up um, and, like, you will f- eventually get through that plateau. Uh, I don't know. Run without music this time. Run See without music. Go for a run with your dog yep. or something mm-hmm. if you have one. If you have family one. dog. Yep. Might be a good little thing to do. Now, I have this one about recovery. How, how do you recover so well uh, from Ted? Because you're doing crazy amounts of running mm. as well as training for footy. Yeah. W- what's kind of some of the practices for recovery that you have in place? I think it's more prehab than rehab. Okay. So like stuff I've done to make sure I'm able to actually function while doing all this running. Uh, like the weight training stuff's huge for it, obviously. So a lot of glute work, a lot of leg work, and it's stuff I've implemented in the past that has kind of all come to fruition now. So a lot of pre prehab work, buying your program would help. Buying my program might even help. <laughs> uh, buy whoever, just buy both. <laughs> buy one of them. So that that that's one thing. The other thing is is diet. I have a I have a good diet unless I'm seeing her, then I drink. <laughs> Yeah, diet, obviously sleep as well. Just like take these things seriously like we do in our house. Yes, 100%. I it's a cliche agree. answer. I'm sorry, mate, but there's no, it's there's not, not really cliche. any other way. No, but it's like when people, yeah, it's it's not a cliche answer. Yeah. But a lot of the answers are cliche. It's like, how do I feel better? Yeah. It's like, sleep. Sleep. It's fixed. <laughs> go to go to the gym. Yeah. It's see, very, s- see some sunlight. Sometimes it's the simple things that we forget mm. how easy it can be Absolutely. for us to do. What type of watches do you recommend for running? Oh, good question. From Miller. Miller, thanks for the question, mate. Um, I'm using a Garmin X6, uh, Phoenix X6 Sapphire. Um, oh, geez, that was a tongue twister. It is a tongue twister, mm. but it's a great watch as well. And uh, they're half price at the moment because the X7's out. So I'd highly recommend one of those if you can afford it. Uh, but to be honest, anything with like a heart rate monitor built in, the Apple Watch is great, Garmin great. It doesn't really matter what you get. You're going to form to that side and you'll probably stick with it for most of your life. I'm an Apple Watch guy. I'm about to change, I reckon, to Apple Watch. To Apple Watch. Why? I just like new shiny things, um, and I'm lucky enough that I can afford it, so I'm going to get an Apple Watch Ultra. <laughs> Very good. Yep. I don't think I've got the Ultra. No, you don't. I've the got old... the 44 millimeters. Oh, God, I've got it's, no it's idea. It's nice. Like, they look... It looks... And my reason for getting the Ultra is, like, I want to be able to leave my phone at home and still go for my hot girl walks with headphones yes. and be able to call people. So beneficial. I can literally send any text that I want to exactly. anyone if I need to. So Imagine I, being able to do that on a run and stuff. Yeah. Like I could go for a recovery run and, and talk, talk to a mate. And, and ring someone. Exactly. Yeah, that is incredible. That's something I really do like about the watches. But we do have the new uh, Whoop bands mm-hmm. as well, which I just thought I'd Exciting. touch on. How much have you found them to be? Because I've been posting them on my story and everyone's been saying, yep. what the hell, what the hell, what the hell are these things? You've been posting them on your story because you've been getting three hours sleep every night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mate. I'm. It's worrying. The, the Whoop is great, but the thing is you get found out really fast. Yeah. Like I need to change things in my life pretty rapidly. It's great though. But it is great. Yeah. It's telling you all the right things. It's, it's not, it's an incredible piece of art. Like I, I want to just keep delving into the stats, but I think you need to be able to balance between like reading the stats, but not having your mood dictated by the stats. I was going to say, don't get caught up or let it affect the way that you live your life too much. Just be very, very careful that you're not, yeah. You know, you lose that balance, like we were saying before. Mm. But the Whoop's fantastic, and and I love having the Whoop and the Apple. I'm literally double akimbo. I'm yeah. most healthiest, fit, analytical. How's data. your stats coming up? Wait, man, I had five hours of restorative sleep last night. Mm, that's slept. that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, I was. That's d- more than I've had this month. Dude, I sleep like deep as a dog at the moment, and that's then good. I I slept for like seven hours forty four last night. Oh, jeez. I'm I'm seven. I'm like always just seven. Just seven. But I want to be eight. What did you get last night? Last night, I think I had about three hours sleep. Here, we'll just, we'll both get our we stats go. up. Oh, no, actually, I got five hours sleep and oh. one hour 44 of restorative sleep. Gee whiz. <laughs> how, are so you, like, how are you so good today? I should be dead. What's your percent for, percent um, recovery? So my recovery percent is 35%. Oh, jeez. That's in red, isn't it? Recovered. Oh, it's in the yellow. Oh, that's okay. I'm in yeah. the yellow. I'm 64% though. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, um, 4.6 strain Yeah these are elite Anyway guys You should yeah. definitely Check out the, the Woot bands Absolutely uh, This is not even Sponsored yet But it might be So mm. um, Go to music on a run If you're going to Listen to music Yeah a real Eclectic music taste I'd say What the it's hell It's very does diverse that mean? It's very 
alternative. It goes, I go from country to Michael Jackson and then I go to a bit of Fred again. Like I'm all over the shop with my music, but my number one running song and anything I listen to to hit a PR, like towards the end of a run, Heal the World by Michael Jackson. Interesting. The issue I love is MJ. there's an, a minute of a fucking kid talking in New Year saying, we need to change the world. We need, and like, I just want to hear it. I mean, obviously, MJ. Michael enjoyed, yeah, anyway, but. <laughs> but uh, that's my favourite song That's my favourite song to run to So Heal oh, the World, Michael Jackson God. Crank it up and get running king Yeah, that's beautiful mm. Alright, last Q&A Best beers on the shred Because I want to just bring in mm. Some of our, you know In real life We'll have a beer on a weekend Yeah, it, I haven't. I actually haven't had a beer since You've been good uh, New Year's Day mm. I've been 24 days sober that's, that's actually a really good crack It's incredible Great work I'm How, You've been feeling incredible Yeah, I'm new yeah. bulge I'm new Prime. Yeah, I'm Prime City we'll at the moment. We'll get you back. We'll get you back. Nah, I'm off him. I'm, 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 I'm done. That's good. I'm done. Fantastic. I'm um, done for a little bit. Best beer, I'd say. I mean, a better beer. Like better beers are are all right. Like the taste isn't amazing. It, it says best beers on the shred, but but do you just want to say just drink the beer that you want to drink? Yeah, it's true. See, I start what I've been doing. I used to be huge on beer. Like the I, I was so like doggish about it. Like I'd only drink beer. Uh, but now what I do is have like, I'll start my night with like two beers max and then I'll go into vodka lime sodas. Love it. And that cures the hangover. Because you just want like the first drink to be a beer. Yeah. And you can really, you can really enjoy it. Like, yeah. like a full carb Carlton draft or something that's ice cold. And just... then have sodas for the rest and of the night. And then sodas the rest of the night. You know what they should try actually? There's this new drink that we've been making, which is vodka and then um, and a live soft drink. It's yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yum. So either like lemonade, lemon lime bitters, they've got pink grapefruit, blood orange and passion mm. fruit, and then ginger as well. So yeah. you can literally go for any of those five flavors and it's an amazing uh, little cocktail. We had that New Year's Day and it was really it was, um, That was the last time that I've drunk. Mm. And the the only thing that I can think of the last 24 days is a vodka alive. Vodka alive. Jeez, they're good. Someone have a vodka alive if you're over 18 and send us a photo. It is the greatest drink nice. that you can have. Louis, to finish off the podcast, mm. I want to ask all of my guests three successful habits that you employ in your life maybe mm. every day it doesn't have to be every day but just three successful habits you can give to the listeners that will change their life number one would be seeking feedback i think you'd probably notice that, like i'm always asking and same with you to me uh for feedback what do you think of this how can i improve on this front living together or just social media wise so like always seeking feedback number two is probably prioritizing the right things for us it's fitness but for you it should be fitness as well like for those listening at home Number three, um, like allowing yourself downtime. I think like this grind set culture can get really toxic and, and it can be very counterintuitive. If you can't actually relax and, and I'm talking midweek at the end of the week, like you need to be able to re relax, have some down, so, downtime and then get back into the grind the next day. The way that you do that is incredible. You've explained those three absolutely magnificently. Thanks, um, but yeah, the way that you do that and actually it's so amazing being able to talk to you and see how that actually, like you actually put these things into place. Mm. It's really, really cool. You just got a whiteboard in your room actually to start to- Yeah, write down there. some goals. That, that's another, that's a, a great way to do it. And ticking them off rapidly, which is always nice. It's a good feeling. It's great to see you succeeding, my friend. Thanks, mate. You too. I'm loving you. the podcast. Well, mate, Prime Potty, we're back, baby. We're Come back. on. <laughs> this is meant to be episode one. This is episode one. Lou, it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on, being the- inaugural mm. guest god i love big words first cab off the rank first baby. cab off the rank it's absolutely fantastic you know how much i love you i know how much you love me i do i'll see you at home see you at home mate thank you mate thanks guys